Hello, my name is Lynn Panous, and I'm the program director for the Advanced Heart Failure and Transplant Fellowship at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. We're so excited that you're considering our program for your training year in advanced heart failure and advanced therapies. We're sorry that it can't be in person, but we hope that your visit will show you what a successful and supportive environment we create for our fellows. As one of the busiest transplant centers in the country, our fellowship ensures that you will be well-versed in advanced heart failure, advanced therapies, and not only that, you will be able to build and refine your skills and approach, learning from senior members in our field. Our faculty members also subspecialize in many different areas, including hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and genetic cardiomyopathy, adult congenital heart disease, as well as amyloidosis and sarcoidosis, and you will be able to build on all of that. We learn so much from collaborating with our fellows, and I hope that this video will provide you a glimpse of the network and community that we will create for you. I really wish that you could see and hear the birds that are sing every morning here and see the incredible trees that are above, but you can't. Uh, however, I'm hoping we can still convince you this is a wonderful place to make your home and to do your training. We moved to Vanderbilt, my husband, my daughter, and I, because we were captivated by the energy here and the diversity of scientific opportunity and the chance to work with new colleagues. Since I've been here, I'm expanding my interest into genetic cardiomyopathy, into learning about the physiology of heart failure at home with our ambulatory monitoring, and to personalizing patient care according to their priorities for what's really important to them. Hello, I'm Kelly Schlendorf. I'm the director of the section of heart failure and transplantation and also medical director of the adult heart transplant program at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. And on behalf of me and my colleagues within the section, uh, welcome to Vanderbilt. Thank you for your interest in our Advanced Heart Failure Fellowship and we really look forward to meeting each of you on interview day. As you think about your opportunities for fellowship training next year, there are a few things I want you to keep in mind about our program. The first is that ours is a section that's really full of talented, hardworking, really fun individuals who are very much committed to training the leaders of tomorrow. And uh, as you probably know, there are several folks within our section who are really uh, leaders in the field and have been doing this for decades. And there are others who are a little bit closer to, to their own training experiences. But all of us are very much committed and eager to teach. And this is one of the things that we consider our top priorities each year. And the really cool thing about our section is that we get to do this alongside really amazing surgical colleagues, nursing and nurse practitioner colleagues, and colleagues from many other disciplines who our fellows work closely with. That includes transplant infectious disease, the cardiac anesthesiologists in our ICU, and many others. Second, keep in mind as you think about your training experience that you really have one year to learn everything there is to know about heart failure and transplantation before you go out there and do it yourself. I'm a big believer in the fact that, that learning is a lifelong process, but again, you have one final training year to learn all there is to know. And so in that sense, clinical volume and the breadth of what you're gonna see is really important to take into account. I think the experience that fellows have here at Vanderbilt is really unparalleled, except at a small handful of other centers across the United States. You are going to see and experience and take care of just about every heart failure pathology there is, as well as every complication that occurs after a VAD or a transplant. Uh, and again, that's a pretty cool experience to have as a fellow. And then finally, as you think about interview day, just keep in mind that it's an opportunity for us to interview you, but also for you to interview us. And so I encourage you to ask questions and to think about not just what life in the hospital will be like if you, if you choose to train here at Vanderbilt, but also what life outside the hospital will be like. Nashville is a really cool city. It's a fun place to live and a fun place to train. So again, thanks for your interest in our program and we very much look forward to meeting you on interview day. Bye-bye. Welcome. My name is Sandeep Zalawadia. I am the medical director for the VAD program at Vanderbilt University Medical Center, and I'm really excited to introduce this program to you. Let me tell you, I was actually a fellow in this program many years ago, and uh, I enjoyed this program so much to the point that I stayed, and I have regretted the day uh, since I uh, joined this program. And let me tell you what keeps me going every day here. Having support of world-class faculty members, portfolio of temporary and permanent devices, including total artificial heart. One of the world's highest transplant volume, amazing patients, amazing pathology, that you will enjoy and learn so much. I sincerely hope that you can consider our program. Uh, we will uh, make this a successful adventure for you, and we are really excited to make uh, friendships of lifetime with you all. 
Hi, I'm Joanne Lindenfeld, and I want to welcome you today uh, to Vanderbilt and our heart failure and transplantation program. We are participating in multi-center uh, NIH grants. We are very interested in participating in grants that explore diversity in the allocation of advanced heart failure therapies and studies in transplant, mechanical circulatory support, and heart failure. We have a very active investigator-initiated research program, and we are the coordinating center for an investigator-initiated study of SGLT2 inhibitors in acute heart failure. I joined the Vanderbilt team, and I have to say that from the perspective of patient care, it's, it's one of the best places I've, I've been, uh, and I've had the opportunity to work with people. From the fellow perspective, I have to say that Vanderbilt in general gives a unique opportunity to combine clinical expertise, training in clinical care, and the ability to do investigative science at the cutting edge. And I think that's really uh, been seen by a lot of the fellows we have coming through um, who have tremendous clinical expertise. You get trained in how to practice transplant medicine and heart failure by the very best. Uh, and you also get the opportunity to participate in a rich uh, scientific experience, which might lead you into a path of investigation or teaching in the future, which is, um, which is great. Hi, I'm Jonathan Menachem. I'm one of the transplant cardiologists here at Vanderbilt. My area of interest is a developing niche of failing congenital heart patients that need advanced therapies such as transplant or mechanical support. So I spend the majority of my research time at least focused on how we get these patients um, to advanced therapies and how we get to them sooner so that they have better outcomes. Hi, my name is Marshall Brinkley. I'm director of the Hypertrophic Car Myopathy Program here at Vanderbilt. Um, also director of the Inpatient Bad Transplant Service. Beyond Hypertrophic Car Myopathy, my research interests include uh, general heart failure medical therapies and have been a PI for a few clinical trials here. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Vanderbilt. I'm one of the advanced heart failure and transplant attendings here at Vanderbilt. Uh, and having trained as a fellow here at Vanderbilt, I was fortunate to have an opportunity to stay on and continue my journey here at Vanderbilt. Uh, given my background in critical care medicine, uh, in addition to advanced heart failure and heart transplantation, uh, my other clinical and research interests include critical care cardiology, uh, temporary FCS platforms, especially as it pertains to uh, ECMO, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all here at Vanderbilt and hopefully have an opportunity to work alongside you. Welcome to Vanderbilt once more. I think the strength of our fellowship program lies in the breadth of disease that we see here in the white population that we serve across geographic regions. Um, the volume of transplants, of course, gives our fellows a great opportunity to take care of the sickest of patients and to participate in the recovery and care as well. My clinical interests here uh, are multifaceted, including the, the care of cardiac amyloidosis patients, um, understanding immunosuppression and tailoring that better in our post-transplant patients, as well as developing better pathways for inpatient heart failure care. One of my favorite parts of Vanderbilt is just the people that work here. As a former general cardiology fellow here, I had the opportunity to get to know a lot of the heart failure faculty and the former heart failure fellows here. And I really, really enjoyed working with them and learning from them. And that was one of the biggest reasons I wanted to stay. Outside of that, clinically, it's also an incredible place to train at because we do the most transplants in the country. So you get to see a lot of volume of patients where you really become an expert, I feel like at least, um, at the end of training. So these were the big things that kept me here. So I think I picked Vanderbilt for a variety of reasons. I think number one, um, you look at the volume of patients that you see here and the volume of transplants you do. Certainly medicine is something that we all learn by doing and there's no better place to learn how to do transplant than at Vanderbilt. Um, beyond that, I wanted to go somewhere that was on kind of the leading edge of things and so at Vanderbilt we do a lot of, um, new, use a lot of newer um, technologies or um, sort of processes. So we do, we use patients with hepatitis C for donor, uh, donors with hepatitis C is something that we do at Vanderbilt. We also do donation after cardiac death, which is an interesting um, and newer kind of uh, area in transplant. And then beyond that, we do things like AL amyloidosis we do transplant for. So we see all these different types of um, transplant technology. And then beyond all of that stuff, the volume and the, um, the different um, 
possibilities. We also do uh, have like great mentorship and great faculty here, and that's obviously the people is the, the biggest reason for why to come here. Uh, well, I've picked Vanderbilt for fellowship for a number of different reasons, uh, including the amazing research mentorship that is here, um, including the uh, the chance to work with some really all-star faculty, um, and uh, the number of procedures such as transplants, uh, LVADs, uh, as well as some of the subspecialty um, options like going to pulmonary hypertension clinic, learning about genetic cardiomyopathies, amyloid patients uh, that are here because it's such a large referral center. When I'm working in the cardiac ICU, we work with two separate teams. The first is the surgical team and the other is the medical team. So what the typical workflow is like, I get here around 6, 6.30 in the morning or so, to pre-round on my patients and short review on them just so I have a good plan by the time we start rounds at around 8 a.m. So when we first start rounds around that time is with our surgical colleagues. So that includes our cardiac surgeons, our anesthesiology critical care uh, attendings, as well as the staff on that side. And we're going through all our patients who are recent transplants or VAD patients, and we're discussing them. Following rounds with that, we do rounds with the general medical team where we have our cardiogenic shock patients and decompensated heart failure patients who are not quite post-transplant yet, but maybe awaiting a transplant or VAD placement or bridge to recovery. So we round with these two separate teams, and by the time we're done with rounds, it's anywhere from 10.30 to 11 a.m. or so. The rest of the day is spent following up on things, uh, making sure all the plans that we set in motion earlier in the day are executed, and seeing any potential consoles that pop up in the ICUs. Um, so a typical day in the cath lab, uh, we are mostly doing right heart caths and biopsies, and so we have a biopsy room um, where we uh, is dedicated entirely to the right heart caths and biopsies. We usually do somewhere between like five to seven um, right heart caths and biopsies would be a typical day. Um, in addition to the right heart caths and biopsies, we also do uh, cardio mems. Um, we get experience in planting cardio mems, so you'll be able to learn how to do those so that you can one day do them in your independent practice. Um, and then. We also do some RAMP studies, um, so for the, particularly for the newer LVAD patients and then any LVAD patient where there's a question or a concern about what speed their LVAD should be at, we do um, RAMP studies for those patients. Um, and that is a typical day in the cath lab. Uh, so in transplant clinic, we are assigned three patients who we see who are at often different stages in their transplant, so further out, uh, patients who are being evaluated who are perhaps very sensitized, um, or uh, patients who have had different complications. So you get to learn how to manage this wide variety of patients uh, in addition to seeing uh, the high volume of uh, initial transplants in the hospital. So why Nashville? Um, I'm a Chicagoan at heart. I lived in Chicago my entire life, and I wasn't really sure what to expect when I came to Nashville. Um, but I must say, my wife and my family have really enjoyed Nashville. Um, there's a lot of outdoor activities you can do here. There's tons of like parks that are good to walk around. Um, it's very kid-friendly and tons of nice places to take. Um, I have a three-year-old and an infant, um, so there's plenty of great places to walk around. Um, and beyond that, I like eating, and there's definitely good food here. Um, Nashville is a very fun city to be in. Um, I happen to live in this uh, neighborhood called the Gulch, which is a cool part of town. There's lots of activities to do outside. For example, my wife and I, within a five to 10 minute walk, we're able to get to a variety of different restaurants. There's close by hiking if we wanted to do, whether it's locally or traveling nearby to the Smokies. Essentially, there's a lot of fun stuff to do in Nashville, which is one of my favorite parts of the city. Um, I moved here from California and um, am living downtown in the Gulch and so what I have loved doing um, on my weekends off when I'm here is kind of exploring the city so there's a lot of really great uh, food. I've explored some of the music scene and gone to like Bluebird Cafe which is where some singers and songwriters come and uh, test out their music for people. Um, and. There's also some great, if you're into outdoor activities, there's some really nice gardens and hills and stuff for hiking. Um, and in the summer, you can go out to the lake and do some boating activities too. So uh, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of fun to be here and it's also a well-connected city if you wanna visit family or friends in anywhere, anywhere else. Okay. 
The biggest strength of the program is the exposure to complex uh, advanced heart failure patients. During my training year, the center performed more than 100 cardiac transplant, which is a very impressive number. And by the end of my training, I was very comfortable in managing patients with cardiac transplant or VAT. The next plus point is the opportunity to work and learn from some of the leaders in the field of heart failure. Uh, there is a great learning environment with the emphasis for you to grow as a physician. In my last uh, week of fellowship, I took a moment to reflect on uh, how much I knew when I first started uh, my fellowship and over the course of one year how much I've learned. Uh, it is a very satisfying feeling and uh, I cannot thank the program for everything they've taught me and have done for me over that, uh, in that year. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jess Houston. I came to Vanderbilt initially for general fellowship in 2016 and stayed on for my transplant year. I do feel like I've been prepared very well, given that I've seen a large volume of transplants and volume and breadth of disease. One of the primary things that initially drew me to Vanderbilt was the number of women I saw in leadership positions. And I think that permeates into the Advanced Heart Failure Fellowship as well. I think the training is unmatched and you will get exposed to anything and everything you can think of, um, probably multiple times. And for example, my last week on service, I got a master class in acute rejection and you know used more thymo and ATGAM than I had used all year. So you really are gonna see the, the things that um, are the scariest and you have to be on top of and have first-hand experience treating those patients, which I thought was really important. My heart failure fellowship helped me tremendously, not only clinically making me strong in hemodynamics, but also academically. During my fellowship year, Carlos, my co-fellow, and I had more than 15 abstracts presented in ACC, HFSA, and SHLT. We did all presentations in the ICLT meeting in France, and we were able to publish our work in JAG and Journal of Cardiac Failure. I still continue to work with the Vanderbilt team, both in prospective and retrospective studies. It is impossible to count the program's strength in one short video. The program is absolutely fantastic, has such an amazing faculty. Going to the Heart Failure Conference every Monday or the selection meetings on Tuesday was like being on a society meeting. It was just an amazing discussion every day. And it's not only the faculty was great, the, the staff was extraordinary. There's practitioners, the transplant coordinators, the bad coordinators, ICU staff, it was just incredible. And aside from the people, it would have taken me at least four years in any other program to see the amount of transplants and get the transplant expertise that I got in my year of heart failure fellow. I think during my year there I saw it all. We had very difficult cases and actually we saw many transplant zebras. Matter of fact, when I left Vanderbilt, they gave me this present and carried with me my, my transplant zebra. We really saw very, very sick patients and I really learned a lot. I hope you all enjoy this video and good luck to everybody. So tell me a little about, about a, 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 a typical week. Monday morning, roll in, make a cup of coffee on the Keurig. <laughs> Exchange some, some sarcastic humor with these two. <laughs> okay, get to work. <laughs> And then disperse to the individual rotations, yeah. whether it's a CCU or it's a heart failure or the VA or the VAT transplant sure. floor. We'll come back at our noon, do our Monday noon lecture. What's the main event on Tuesday afternoon? Selection committee. So after lunch on Tuesdays, all orbits or all planets orbit around selection committee. So formerly four and three in post COVID, yeah. everyone. Um, meets and goes over all the new patients that are potentially eligible for VAD or transplant. And the hours before, everyone's combing through investigations, figuring out what's missing, what's pending, what hasn't been reported, um, and putting that all together so we can have uh, as efficient as possible a meeting afterward. Michael, what will you remember most about this year? Um, definitely the number of transplants. Uh, but no, more specifically, it's uh, a year of awesome training. The clinical exposure is is unparalleled, um, and it's all done in a really collegial environment. I really felt appreciated. I uh, felt that I created some lifelong relationships here, and I'm, I'm sad to be gone, but I'm glad I was here for the year I was. So uh, it, it was a special year of training. My current um, position is co-director of heart failure outreach at the Nova Healthcare System, which is located in the greater Washington D.C. area in Northern Virginia. 
I graduated from the Advanced Heart Failure Fellowship at Vanderbilt in 2021. My current clinical and academic interests really lie in extending um, advanced heart failure therapies to communities that are, have traditionally had difficulty uh, interfacing effectively with the with, uh, healthcare system as a whole. I felt that the Heart Failure Fellowship program at Vanderbilt has immensely prepared me for um, uh, my current role uh, in a variety of different ways. Uh, one way is uh, really at Vanderbilt I was able to be part of a fantastic team that was uh, instrumental at, at rendering care. One very apparent uh, strength of the program is the is the immense uh, volume of transplants and, and advanced heart disease that you'll see. Uh, where how Vanderbilt is strategically located, it does offer them a unique opportunity to really be sort of the the center to render care within a large swath of, of the American um, area, uh, Southeast area. Um, I would say though, honestly, it's not so much the volume that really makes Vanderbilt a special place and, and perhaps in my opinion one of the best uh, places to train, but in fact it's actually a lies in, in the proximity to just a number of just uh, fantastic individuals, whether it's from the house staff who are very eager and, and, uh, and oftentimes uh, uh, by chomping at the bit to, to learn more, but more importantly it's actually the, the uh, skill set of the uh, attendings and not just within the heart failure, uh, advanced heart failure program, but also within the surgical program, the anesthesia program, the electrophysiology uh, aspects. There are just so many immensely gifted individuals that are all, again, very, very warm and, and easy to approach and really have a, embody the, the spirit of, of camaraderie and, and really just a um, uh, um, uh, sort of collegial spirit. So, <laughs> One memory, I'd probably give you more than just one memory of, of, of really uh, uh, fantastic experiences I've had at Vanderbilt. That's, that's, I'll sort of hedge in and give you two. So one is um, I had the opportunity to uh, train alongside a, uh, a gentleman who's now currently on, on faculty at, uh, at Vanderbilt uh, within the Advanced Heart Failure Program. Uh, and, uh, and, and it wasn't so much as one memory as much as it was just a multitude of memories of us uh, just going down to get coffee, no matter how busy or serf, uh, service or rotation we were on, we'd always carve out about a good five to 15 minutes of just to walk down to uh, uh, ABP Cafe or whatnot, and just grab coffee and just really just talk about a variety of different things, whether it's clinical, whether it's personal, whether it's just anything uh, in, of our interactions amongst a variety of individuals. And so to me, that's one of the warmest uh, uh, memories I hold of, of, of being there at Vanderbilt. Um, but I say more on the clinical side, uh, one case I should say uh, that really speaks out is there's a young man who's about 23 years old, um, had a brand uh, new child. He was actually an immigrant from, uh, from a, um, an, an African country uh, when he was young. Uh, but regardless, he came to us really in dire shape. Um, he had uh, bad kidney disease due to his end-stage heart failure. There was a question on whether he had constrictive uh, disease related to a uh, chronic Hep B infection. Uh, and he had uh, elevated uh, pulmonary vascular resistance and a couple other things that really would make him a challenging candidate at, uh, at pretty much most other centers other than a place like Vanderbilt. And so, um, you know, it, was, it wasn't so much as his presentation, but more or less the, the sort of all hands on uh, deck that the entire um, uh, department within the Advanced Heart Failure uh, group really did uh, devote towards him. Because uh, we saw in him a, a, a young gentleman that, that had uh, uh, many more years and, and more importantly, uh, great things to offer the world. And so uh, I was just thrilled uh, that uh, it was, um, me running his numbers, writing them down uh, from his uh, swan when he's in the, in the cath, uh, when he's in the unit, and um, and being able to present him at our selection committee meeting, and really being able to, to give sort of uh, very up to date information to the committee. And when we were able to actually list him, we did uh, um, uh, get him through and got him transplanted. And, and more importantly, and I think probably the most uh, fulfilling aspect of my fellowship career was. Uh, seeing him within the last week of my fellowship uh, for his uh, uh, follow-up, he must have been, I want to say, about three months out, but he was walking, he was actually doing laps around the Parthenon, and, and just the amount of joy that that uh, you could see in his eyes and how he was able to actually interact uh, with his little baby girl. Um, 
kind of makes it kind of, you know, a little bit of tear jerk for some, but uh, it definitely warms your heart. Hi, my name is Richa Gupta, and I'm an advanced heart failure cardiologist at MedStar Washington Hospital Center in Washington, D.C., which is a large stage D heart failure program in the Mid-Atlantic. Um, so I've been on the job now for a whopping 10 months. Um, I graduated from Vanderbilt's Heart Failure Fellowship Program just a year ago in 2021. Um, educationally, I'm an assistant professor of medicine at Georgetown. We spend a lot of time on the wards and in clinic with Washington Hospital Centers and Georgetown's excellent house staff, cardiology fellows. We have two advanced heart failure fellows, so it's a ton of fun. Um, and probably one of my favorite parts of the job is, is getting to work with them. Um, so currently, my interest in event heart, advanced heart failure lie in clinical transplant. Um, transplant outcomes, imaging of the allograph with PET and MRI, and sex differences in advanced heart failure therapies between men and women. Um, administratively, I've gotten involved uh, here this year with our transplant program pretty heavily, so I help oversee our transplant waitlist uh, in our evaluations. Um, the Heart Failure Fellowship Program at Vanderbilt, first and foremost, it really helps me hone my clinical skills in both um, stage C and stage D heart failure. Um, in our role as fellows at Vanderbilt, we are centrally involved in sort of all of the decision making um, on rounds on the floor in the ICU. Uh, in the evaluations for both transplant and VAD, also we're sort of directly presenting these patients at selection meeting and then of course we're tightly involved in their post-op care acutely and then chronically in clinic after that. Um, of course, Vanderbilt is world renowned for its transplant volume. I'm using everything that I've learned over there to sort of help program build and do research over here and it's really exciting to be able to do this. I have so many memories from my time in fellowship that were meaningful to me. I'll just mention two experiences that I really value. One is sort of personal and the other one is a little bit clinical. Uh, as fellows, so in the heart failure program uh, at Vanderbilt, we sit together in an office that's a shared cubicle in the same suite as the rest of the faculty and it's really fun. Um, we grow really close, you know, we bounce clinical dilemmas and research ideas off of each other. We vent together at the end of the day. We talk about the ups and downs and the emotions of everything that we've just seen in the ICU. Um, and then randomly a faculty will pop in on us just to socialize or to talk to us about an interesting patient or a paper that came out or a research idea that they're really excited about. And some of my best memories are some of the conversations and interactions we've had just doing that, just hanging out in the suite amongst this like brain trust. Um, and it's amazing how, how that kind of experience can kind of grow you um, in the course of a year. Clinically, one of the special things about being a fellow at Vandy is that you're on service so much. You get to follow these patients that you're seeing longitudinally. So you see them go completely through the evaluation process from start to finish. Um, you see these patients start out, you know, literally on death's door, you get them through that, and then later you're seeing the same patients walking around clinic living normal lives, which is always the part of this job that uh, gives me chills in a good way, and it still does to this day. Um, in the process, you're humbled and you really learn from those patients that you're not able to have that success with or for whom advanced therapies just don't necessarily provide benefit. And this is actually the harder thing to learn how to deal with, I think, is how to manage those patients and manage those stage C patients that are just on the, on the brink and it's uncertain which direction they're headed in. Um, so the fellowship program really is structured so that you're able to experience this kind of longitudinal care and get really good at just taking care of complicated sick patients and recognizing the, the strategies that are going to work the best to improve their quality of life. So I'll end on that note and thanks for letting me share. I hope you will see that your clinical experiences here will be complemented by robust curricula, including conferences such as Journal Club, M&Ms, as well as in-person experiences in the Immunology Lab, VA ECMO team, as well as heart failure and palliative care. We are committed to mentorship and your professional growth, and we all look forward to meeting you soon. Thank you.